In this video, we'll take a look at galvanic cells and how to draw the notation for these cells when they contain an inert electrode. I'm James Wahlberg. Let's take a look. The first thing to know about drawing notation under these slightly more complicated circumstances is that some things stay the same to what you're used to for drawing notation. In particular, the anode is still on the left and the cathode is still on the right. We're always drawing these cells such that the flow of electrons is from left to right, from anode to cathode. So that stays the same. Another thing that stays the same is that we still do not include the balancing coefficient for any species in the notation. We're simply looking at what gets oxidized and what gets reduced. We're not looking here at the stoichiometry. So all of that stays the same. Some differences to keep in mind for drawing notation for these kinds of cells includes that we will now have the metal of the inert electrode in the notation. Before, we only had species that actually participate in the oxidation or the reduction directly, but here uh, we are going to include something that is not getting oxidized or reduced, and that is the inert electrode. So that's a change. Another change is that in the case when the species being oxidized or reduced stay in the aqueous phase, when both the reduced form and the oxidized form are both aqueous, we're going to write, write both of them, but we're going to separate them by a comma, not by a bar. Because remember, in electrochemical cell notation, the vertical bar indicates a phase boundary going from either solid to aqueous or from gas to aqueous, or even gas to solid, I suppose, or liquid to something else, that vertical bar always means we're changing phase. But if the species is staying in the aqueous phase, then we separate the two ions by a comma. I'll show you examples of all of this here. So here is a generic reaction where we have a reactive anode and inert cathode. Let's analyze this a bit. So first of all, looking at the left side of this reaction, we have the solid Y, some species. And since it's a solid, of course, its oxidation number is zero. And Y is changing, and it's going to Y3+. plus. Well, how do you go from zero to three plus? Well, you're increasing the oxidation number, of course. And since we're only working with electrons and electrons are negative, that must mean that we are losing electrons because minus a minus is a plus or an increase in the oxidation number. So Y is being oxidized and I'm tracing that by this red arrow here. The other species in the reaction is X and we see that X is going from two plus down to one plus. Well, the oxidation number is being reduced and the only way you can change anything in an electrochemical system is by adding or subtracting electrons, which are negative. Therefore, X must be gaining electrons. And a gain of electrons is reduction. So therefore, Y is happening at the anode, the Y being oxidized, and the X is happening at the cathode. But notice that we don't have any solid X in this system. There is no X. And if you think about ions moving around in solution, how would you even connect a wire to an electron or rather to an ion that's moving in solution? You can't. So there must be some other electrode in this system and we'll call that Z. There must be an inert cathode where that reduction of X is occurring. So that's some of the detective work that you can play to find that you do in fact have an inert electrode if the system doesn't right out show you. So to actually put this into notation then, it would look like this. First, we have the Y solid. We're starting always at the anode where the oxidation occurs. We have the Y solid. There's a short vertical bar for the phase change from solid to aqueous because we're going to the Y3+, plus, which is an aqueous cation. Then we'll have the salt bridge, which indicates we are in two separate cells. And over on the other side, in the cell where the reduction is happening, we're going from X2 plus down to X plus, both of which are staying in the aqueous phase. Therefore, we separate those two species by the comma. We do then have a vertical bar because there is a phase boundary to the solid inert electrode Z. So here you can see how we put this all together. And here are the pieces again, just labeled uh, specifically for your reference. 
Well, let's look at some actual examples and let's trace these systems. All right, so here we are looking at copper and iron. And you can see that we're starting with solid copper and any element has an oxidation number of zero and the copper is going up to two plus. Well, since we're only working with negative electrons, how do you increase the oxidation number? Well, you must be losing those electrons because minus a minus is a plus. We can write the half of the electrochemical system for the copper in this way. We're going from the solid copper and we have our vertical bar because we're going through a phase change to the aqueous copper two plus. Then we will change from the one half cell to the other, have a salt bridge connecting them. And on the other side, we look at what's happening to the iron. Well, the iron is going from three plus down to two plus. Therefore, it must be gaining electrons and a gain of electrons is a reduction. However, there is no solid iron in this system. So there must be some other solid inert electrode to which we can attach our wire. Because again, how would you connect a wire to a moving aqueous ion? So we'll write the iron as uh, going from Fe3 plus aqueous comma down reduced to Fe2 plus aqueous. And then we have a vertical bar for the phase boundary. And we're told to assume that any inert electrode is platinum. Therefore, we'll write the solid platinum on the far right side of our cathode notation. So let's look at another example. Here we have hydrogen gas, an elemental substance, therefore with an oxidation number of zero, going to H plus with an oxidation number of plus one. So hydrogen is losing electrons, minus and minus is a plus. And the other part of the system has Fe3 plus, iron cations, going down, being reduced to Fe2 plus. So we've identified the oxidation and the reduction, therefore we know that the hydrogen reaction will happen at the anode and the iron reaction will happen at the cathode. However, if you think about setting the system up, there's nothing to attach our wires to because the hydrogen is a gas and then it goes to an aqueous species, H plus, and the iron is all in aqueous solution. So how do we attach our wires to this? There must be some solid inert electrodes going on here. So let's start on the anode side with the platinum electrode. There is our vertical bar for our phase boundary. And then we encounter the hydrogen gas, but the hydrogen itself is going through a phase transition from the gaseous phase to the aqueous phase. So we have another vertical bar for a phase boundary. And then finally, we have the H plus as the aqueous species that results after the oxidation. We'll put our salt bridge in next to show that we're going from the anode half cell over to the cathode half cell. And over in that cathode half cell, we have the iron being reduced from Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus, both of which are aqueous species. So we will put a comma between them. Then since we've deduced there must be an inert electrode on that half cell as well, we'll put the vertical bar for a phase boundary. And again, we're told to assume that anything inert is a platinum electrode. So finally, we finish by having the solid platinum inert electrode. So I hope you can see that with just a couple of changes and modifications, these systems aren't that hard. You have to do a little bit of detective work, just keep the basic rules in hand. And then remember a couple of changes primarily that if species stay in aqueous solution, you separate them by a comma instead of by a vertical bar. That vertical bar always means a phase transition. All right, well, that's it for now. Good luck with your studies of chemistry, and I'll see you in another video.